So welcome to College Algebra. So there's an exam tonight. I hope that you knew that yeah. already. Uh, so any questions about the exam? Any questions about it? Yes? It's just the quizzes, right? Right. Other questions? <clears throat> okay. Exciting times. So today's the 17th. Last time we were talking about transformations of functions, and we're still talking about transformations of functions a little bit. Okay, so we talked about four kinds. So in the first place, there's horizontal shift. So a horizontal shift is given by x transforms to x minus c. Okay, so then that's the, the definition. So for example, I could give y is f of x transforming to y is f of x plus 2. So what would that do? Shift the plot. Yeah, shift the plot, but how? Right, the plot moves left two. And you might object slightly and say, well, that plus two kind of looks like something's going to be moving to the right. And I agree entirely. Coordinate the coordinate system is moving to the right. Okay. The coordinate system moves to the right. The, the object itself moves to the left. It'd be just like me saying that I'm going to move this, I'm going to move this pin to the left. Are you ready? I did it. Okay, incredible. Okay, <clears throat> so the plot moves left. Uh, and if, if we were to uh, draw this, draw such an example, then <clears throat> if I give you this plot, I say that this is F, then please draw this transformation. How will it look? To the left. So you could think of it like this point right here, this lowest point of the parabola that's called the vertex. We're going to take that vertex and just move it to the left. So like this. Alternatively, you could think of it like, you could think of it like, I take the red plot and I hold that vertex still so that it cannot move, and then I grab the axis and I pull the axis to the right, and then that's what you would see. Okay, so that's a horizontal shift, vertical shift. So horizontal shift plays with the with x. What does vertical shift play with? Y. With y. So now it'd be y transforms to y minus k. There's nothing special about k. We could have used c, but for whatever reason, I'm using k. Um, so, for example, y is f of x transforms to y minus one is in height is f of x. So what is this? What is what occurs? Vertical shift. Can you be specific? Right. So the plot moves up one. And you might object and say, I don't know that minus one. Why minus one? It looks like something's moving down. The coordinate system is moving down. Okay, so then to 
think of another drawing. I could say, okay, here's the Here's this thing. Okay, and what we want to do is do this transformation. So the plot moves up one. So you could think of it like just moving that, that vertex up one. So something like that. And the whole thing just moves up. turns to green for some reason. <laughs> so alternatively, alternatively, instead of moving the parabola itself up, you can, you can imagine the situation as, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to hold this point fixed so that it cannot move. I'm going to grab hold of the axis, the coordinate system, and I'm going to pull it down. And then if I let go, this is what you would see. Okay. So <coughs> The next thing is a horizontal scale. So in this case, because it's horizontal, what variable are we playing with? X. With X. So formerly, when we were talking about a shift, we, the, the way we played with X was with, was with addition or subtraction. But because it's a scale now, we're going to play with X by division or multiplication. So x to x over c. So for example, uh, y is f of x. Transforms to y is f of x over 2. So what will this be? Right, the plot will undergo a horizontal scale of two. Well, so multiplication, division is the inverse of multiplication. So I'll do another example to make it more clear. Uh, so <laughs> so if I was to give you uh, this again. So specifically what will happen is that we're going to take all, you can think of it like grabbing the red and taking all the horizontal coordinates and multiplying them by 2. So it's like we're stretching it out and it's going to be a lot wider. So that means that, for example, if this is the point 1, 1, x is 1 and y is 1, then because this, this right, because this is a horizontal scale, vertically it will be unchanged. So it'll, so it'll still be at, at height 1. Its horizontal position was, was formerly 1. Its new horizontal position will be 2. If I gave you a hor horizontal position 50, the new horizontal position will be 100. If I gave you horizontal position negative 8, the new horizontal position will be negative 16. So it'll look just like this one, except stretched out. Horizontally. OK. <clears throat> and then the last one, before we do a specific numerical example, is a vertical scale. So now it'll be y 
transforms to y over k. Okay, so for example, y is f of x transforms to say uh, 3y is f of x. So now this is addressing your question about division or multiplication. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Okay. Y is going to scale at one third. Right. So the plot will undergo a vertical scale of one third. So this is <laughs> this is like the the theme park transformation that does the following. You know all those little signs that say you must be at least this tall to ride the ride. And because we're all adults, essentially probably every one of us could ride all of the rides. Okay? But what if what if someone went through the theme park and then made every one of those signs three times as tall? That that wouldn't be that wouldn't be any good, right? Essentially none of us would be able to ride anything except for the little teacup thing, right? And who wants that? <laughs> Okay, so, so, so it would it, it, the same effect could be achieved, right? Instead of instead of taking all the all the signs and making them three times as tall, I could make all of you one third of, as tall, and the same effect, right? Teacup only for you. Okay, right. So any question about? So let's draw one. <clears throat> So how about something like, I'll make it just a little bit different so it's not too confusing. I'll, uh, I'll make a line. So that means that every, every vertical position, every vertical position is now going to be multiplied by one third. So that means the horizontal positions are unchanged, but everything is one third as tall as it was before. So if, if the vertical position was, was 12 right here, then what's the new vertical position over here? Four. Four. And if the vertical position over here was negative 21, then what's the new vertical position over here? Seven. Negative seven. Right? So it'll look just like this one except flatter. <laughs> Okay, so any question about this? Okay, there's one more kind of transformation that we need to talk about, and we've actually already talked about it, but um, it's, a, it's a special case, but we're going to single it out. So the specific transformation x transforms to negative x. So what this is, is th this is, because we're playing with x, is it a horizontal transformation or a vertical one? Horizontal. It's horizontal. So this is a horizontal something or other. So this is the same as multiplying by negative 1. x gets multiplied by negative 1. Or, if you like, x gets divided by negative 1. So this would be this is the same as saying that we're going to do we're going to do a horizontal scale of negative one. A horizontal scale of negative one. So we've already talked about it, but we just haven't I've been avoiding talking about scaling by negative things. I've avoided talking about it. But now I'm saying well, just what if you do that? So what this is, is this is a horizontal reflection. So for example, uh, 
uh, if this one is y is f of x, something like this, a horizontal reflection now, what we're going to do, you can think of it like this. We're going to pick this up. The, 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 the graphite axis and the red all together as an ensemble, pick it up, turn it over, and put it back down. So it's like we're going to, so you can think of it like this. I'm going to pick this up and then put it on that one. So how will it look? So, yeah, like this. So it's supposed to look... So you can imagine it's like in between here, in between these two is a mirror, and when the red one looks that way into the mirror, it sees the green one. And when the green one looks that way into the mirror, it sees the red one. Okay, so a horizontal reflection. <coughs> and if I just said something about a horizontal reflection, what do you think I'm gonna say now? Vertical, Vertical reflection. <laughs> And if a horizontal reflection is x changes to negative x, then what's a vertical reflection? Y changes to, neg to negative y. Okay. This is a vertical reflection. Okay, so then, so if I say that this is y is f of x, then please tell me how does negative y is f of x look? And this one was y is f of x negative x. Right, so now it'll be like I'm grabbing the, the graphite axis and the red as an ensemble. I, I pick it up and turn it over and set it down, like flipping the red down, so like this. So, to vertically scale someone by negative two, that would mean that would mean that you you're doing two things: you're making them twice as long and turning them upside down. That's what that would mean. Okay. So to take to take the to take the the theme park signs, if you were to vertically scale them by negative half, then they'd be half as tall and upside down <laughs> as, as revenge for making them three times as tall previously, I suppose. Okay, so then for example, suppose that we consider this transformation. Y is, y is L of X transforms to say uh, Y plus three is L of X divided by negative 4. So now since this is the first one of this kind, I'm going to do it and then I'm going to give, give you another one so that you know what it is that I'm asking for. So in the first place, so in the first place, uh, is there a vertical transformation? Yes. yes. How can you see that there is a vertical transformation? Change the y. Yeah, we play with the Y's. So the plot will somehow move vertically. So how does it move? Down three. Down three. Okay. Now, is there a horizontal transformation? Yes. Yes, because mm -hmm. because we're playing with the x's. Now, two things are occurring. We can, in one sense, you could say just one thing is occurring, but I'm going to break it into two pieces. So suppose it was that. Suppose it was just that that it, I'm covering up the negative. So I'm covering up the negative. What would the horizontal transformation be? OK. 
Okay, so horizontal scale of four. And then, because this is negative, what else also? A horizontal reflection. So I'm just saying, I want you to, I want you to break this into the two pieces. You're scaling it by four, and you're turning it around. Okay, so now I give you one. So y is p of x transforms to uh, negative 2y is p of x minus uh, 1. So I want you to tell me how the plot reacts to this. Okay. So the plot will move right one. Not a shift, right? It's a vertical scale, and it's of half. Vertical scale half. So why is it half? Right. So it, this is li it's like saying that you're making the coordinate system twice as tall. That's like, that's like the signs at the theme park. Someone came by and stretched them all out and made them twice as tall but didn't change you. So that's the same as, that's, the sa that, that's equivalent to making you half as tall. Okay, so what else is occurring? Vertical reflection. So any question about this? So for those of you who are having a little bit of difficulty with the theme park thing, you, you can algebraically look at this and say, well, negative 2y, that's the same as negative and then y divide by half. Because division by half is the same as multiplication by 2. So vertical scale of half. And if that bothers you, then just ignore it. <laughs> okay, stick with, stick with which one is best for your, the inner workings of your brain. Any question about this? Okay. So, <clears throat> so, let's draw one. So suppose I draw for you the following. And then I say that I, in red, I have provided for you y is f of x. I want you to provide for me the transformation <coughs> y divided by negative 2 is f of x plus 1. So I want you to draw for me so let's uh, let's break down what is being requested in the same way so don't get don't get too thrown off by the fact that we're drawing something okay because if this wasn't here then I could ask you well what is, what is this transformation doing well, what is it doing? Yes, the plot will move left one, and what else will occur? Uh, vertical scale two. 
Yes, a vertical scale. Two, and also a vertical reflection. So, before we do anything, before we do anything, I'd like to point out the following. So the red, if it was raining on that red thing, would it hold water? No. No. But when I draw the green thing, how about that? Yeah, it better hold water. Okay, so, so qualitatively, when I'm, if I give you such an exercise and I ask you to do this, if I give you something that won't hold water and ask you to vertically reflect it, well, it had better hold water <laughs> and vice versa. Okay, so let's see if we can think about this, if we can figure out where a point goes, just sort of in our head to reason our way through it, then I'll show you how to compute it directly. Okay. So here's a point. Here's a point. So three things have to occur to it. So in the first place, it has to move left one. Okay. So it would be here if, if, if only that occurred. So left one. Oops. So left one. Then it has to be vertically scaled by two. Right. So what is its present vertical coordinate? One. And if you multiply that by 2, what would be the vertical coordinate? Two. It'd be 2. So, so to move it left 1 and scale it 2, that would be left 1 and then to here. And what's the last thing that has to occur? A vertical reflection. Right, so it'll, it'll flip down to here. So that, that point right there is going to move there. OK. So let's do one more, and then I'll show you how to compute it directly. So here's a point. So what are the three things that need to occur? Left one. Left one. So I, so I move left one. Then what? Up two, up two. Why up two? Two, times two? Right, because presently its vertical coordinate is two. And to vertically scale it, that means multiply the vertical coordinate by two. So presently it's two, multiplied by two is four. And then what's the last thing? Yeah, now flip it over. Okay? So at negative four. So blah 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 here. Okay, now that's a lot of hand waving talk. So let's do it with pencil and paper and make sure it's clear. So there's three things that are occurring. So if I call this if I say that this is point uh point one, say, so point one, point two and point three. And let's deal with those three points computationally. So point one, what are its coordinates? Negative three, Negative three comma one. So now there are three separate operations that must occur. So one of them is left left one. So the fact that it's moving left one means that we're playing with what, which coordinate? The x coordinate. Okay, and, and the fact that we're doing left one means what are we doing to the x coordinate? So not visually, I mean computationally, so ignore the picture now. Subtract one. So it'll be negative four comma one. What is the next thing that we're doing to the coordinate? Multiply by two. Yeah, so vertical scale of two, right? So then the fact the fact that we're the fact that we're doing a vertical scale means that we're playing with which coordinate? The y coordinate. We're playing with the y. So. In particular, we're doing a vertical scale of 2, so that means we're going to take the y coordinate and multiply by 2. Yes? Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I, I wrote it wrong in the first place, so negative 1 here and negative 1 here. Okay, good. So now the vertical coordinate is negative 1, and then we're going to multiply it by 2. So that means that in particular, the horizontal coordinate is unchanged. And the new vertical coordinate is negative 2. 
What is the last thing we're doing? Yeah, a vertical reflection. So the fact that it's a vertical reflection means that we're playing with what coordinate? We're playing with the y coordinate. And reflection, we all understand what that means, right? Left to right, top to bottom. That's what that means, like looking in a mirror. But what does it mean with coordinates? Multiply by negative 1. So the fact that this is a vertical reflection means we're playing with the second coordinate. And the fact that it's a reflection means that we're negating. So what is the new second coordinate? 2. Two. And so now, okay, now it's just a matter. I just need to find that point. Negative 4, positive 2. So uh, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and then dot, dot. So now let's see if we can, so that's where I claim point one is going. So now let's see if we can talk our way through it. So here's point one. Here's point one. What are the three things I have to do to it? X, Left one, so to there. And then now what? So someone said reflect. So I'll do that. So if I reflect it, then it, now it's up here. Now what? It's, its present vertical coordinate is 1, so now I'll multiply it by 2 to get 2. You can do these in any order. Right? If, you, if you preferred, you could do the scale, and then the reflection, and then the shift. Okay? Good. So the same is true of all the other ones. Okay. So let's do them just now. I won't do it so slow-mo. So slow I'll do it quick. So point two is at negative one, positive two. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move it left. So that'd be negative two, positive two. And then I'm going to vertically scale it by two. So that'd be negative two, positive four. And then I'm going to vertic re vertically reflect it. So negative two, negative four. So did that work? Sure did. And then point three, its, it's coordinates are currently three, one. So I'll move it left 1, so 2, 1. Now I'll vertically scale it, 3, 2, or sorry, 2, 2. And then I'll vertically reflect it, negative 2, 2. So did that work? No, that's not right, vertical. <laughs> vertical reflection needs to affect the Why? vertical coordinate. <laughs> So two, negative two. So did that work? OK, that worked. OK, and now connect the dots. And as I mentioned at the beginning, right, so the red one, would it hold water? Um, no, but how about the green one? Yeah, yeah it, it would hold some water. Good. Any question about this? Okay. <clears throat> so it just depends on, on who knows what. <laughs> but I'll say that there's plenty of students who, who prefer to think of it entirely with a computation. They do the computation and then they plot the points. Right? They, re they read the plot just for the points and then they ignore the plot and do the computation and then plot those points. There's students who, who, who do that and prefer that and then there's other students who would really rather never ever ever under any circumstance deal with these coordinates <laughs> and instead they like to chase the points around by flipping them and, and that. Whatever your preference is. Okay, but be familiar with both. Any question about this? <coughs> okay. So <coughs> So now, uh, these horizontal and vertical transformations are important. And we're going to deal with the following definition about functions. So this is about the parity of functions. So in the first place, you know the word parity from another place, except it wasn't about functions. It was about 
it, yeah, it was about numbers, and it was even or odd. So, for example, what is the parity of 4? Even. even. And what is the parity of 41? Um. Odd. But now I'd like to point something out to you, okay, that if you extend the definition of parity to not just the non-negative integers but also to numbers, how about, how about pi? Is pi even or odd? It's neither one of these things. Pi is not, is, is not even, and it is not odd. It's neither one of these. So understand, understand that the negation of even is not odd. The logical negation of even is not odd. And the logical negation of odd is not even. Right, so a number can be even, odd, or none of these things. Okay. So now... The same is going to be true about functions. So, so a function f is going is said to be even when f of negative x is f of x. And then halfway down the page. f is odd when f of negative x is negative f of x. So now, if, if the function in question doesn't satisfy either one of these, then it's, then it's not even that it's not odd. And that's fine. Most functions are neither of these. And then as a point of interest, every number, as far as numeric parity is concerned, every number must be exactly, it must, it must be even, odd, or neither, and it can't be any combination. But it is possible for functions to be even and odd. So that's just a, a neat little thing. So now, what's the distinction here between these two conditions? Right, the left-hand sides are the same, but the right-hand sides are different. So even is saying something like the negative is squashed, okay, whereas, the, whereas odd is saying something like the negative can come out to play, and it can, it can escape out of the argument. Okay, so now let's try and understand what we mean about this. So switching, switching x to negative x, what is that doing? when you switch x to negative x as a horizontal reflection. It's a horizontal reflection. So the analytic way to understand this is the following, is that you perform the transformation y is f of x transforms to y is f of negative x. So we know, we know that this is a horizontal transformation. And what evenness, what evenness is saying is that this has no effect. Uh, I'll, ex I'll explain what I mean. So the y, y is unchanged, only x is changing to negative x. So this, this is going to have no effect. So the geometry of this <coughs> is that the plot of the plot of y is f of x is horizontally symmetric. Okay, so an example. So I almost always draw my axes with arrows, but I'm not doing it on purpose this time. So I want you to imagine this. Okay. 
what would happen, what effect would occur if I could pick up this, this graphite axis with the red plot attached to it, pick it up, turn it over, and set it back down? No change, right? You wouldn't see anything at all. No, no, you'd see no visual effect. Okay? So if you were to reflect it horizontally, you would see this. <laughs> no difference. So alternatively, you can think of it like this. So ignoring that one for a moment. And there's, there's a, a red object right there. The red object is looking at a mirror. What would the red object see if it looked in a mirror? It would see that. That's what it would see. And vice versa. If this was you, and you were looking in the mirror, that's what you would see. Okay, so there's a horizontal symmetry here. So, <coughs> alternatively, what about this one? So is this, is this even? Is it even? No, it's not. Because now imagine, imagine that this is you, right? And that's your foot. You're, you're standing at a full length mirror, and that's your foot. And this is your head, and somehow you're leaning back or whatever, I don't know. So if you were to look down at your foot, where would your foot be? Would it be way over there? No, no it'd be right here, because it's a mirror, right? So is this symmetric? No. Alternatively, you can think of it like this. Pick this up, turn it over, and put it back down. What would you see? Not the same. You'd see this. And those two are not the same. Right? In the same way that, in the same way that here's, here's my hand, okay? If I, if I was to um, reflect my hand across a mirror, okay, then this is my right hand, you'd see my left hand. So now, imagine for a moment that you're looking at a full length mirror and you're holding your hand up, maybe giving a Spock gesture, right? Something, but or otherwise just hold your hand up. Now look at the person in the mirror. You're holding up your right hand. What, what hand is the person in the mirror holding up? their left hand. Okay. Good. <clears throat> so that's because you take a reflection of this and it becomes that one. Okay. So your so in that way your your hand is not does not have horizontal symmetry. Good. So a function is odd when so now analytic Analytic has an L in it. So in the first place, what we're saying is now let's consider this transformation. Why is f of x transforms to y is f of negative x? So, so this one up here, this was a horizontal transformation. So even a horizontal reflection. So an even function is when a horizontal reflection has no effect. So this is a horizontal reflection. A horizontal reflection. And because of this rule, because of this condition, that means we can take this negative and do what with it? It can come out to play, right? So this is y 
is negative f of x. But then now I can take this equation and multiply both sides by negative 1. That is to say, move the negative over to the other side. And now ignoring this for a moment, ignoring the first place, what is this transformation? The transformation from this one to that one? That's a, a vertical reflection, right? A vertical reflection. So, an odd function, an odd function is a function when the effect of a horizontal reflection is the same as the effect as a vertical reflection. So even, an even function is when the horizontal reflection does nothing. An odd function is when a horizontal reflection does the same thing as a vertical reflection. And they're the same. Okay, so let's have a, let's have a example. So now again, it's not usually my style, but for, for, for the purposes of just illustration, I'm not going to draw arrows on my stuff here. So here's a function. So there's a function. I want you to, in the axis on the right, I want you to do a horizontal reflection. So what am I asking you to do? Right, I want you to take the red and turn it over. So like, like take this red and whoop, put it right there. So if you were to do that, then it would look like this. Okay, so the green, the green is the horizontal reflection of the red. So now, this one, I want you to do a vertical reflection. So now it's like saying, I want you to take the red and flip it over down onto this one. So this part that's in the bottom left will flip up to the top left. This part in the top right flip down to the bottom right. And what notable thing has occurred? These are the same. A horizontal reflection is the same effect as a vertical reflection. Therefore, it's odd. Okay. And by way of comparison, so now that you see, I think, what I was trying to get at, now I'm going to do this example very quickly. So supposing that this is the function. How does its horizontal reflection look? Same. The same. So what does that mean about this function? It's even. Okay. So that's nice. Let's make its vertical reflection. So how does the vertical reflection look? Right. Right. So now, are these the same? They're not the same. And therefore, is it, is it odd? It's not odd. Okay, we're out of time. Okay, 
So then, there's an exam tonight. I'll see you there. Have a nice rest of your Monday.